Good afternoon here. Um, I'm Andrew, and that's my buddy Ricky. And uh, we're glad y'all are here today. The ones that showed up, I can assure you, I don't know what the talk's gonna be like, but I know the food's gonna be good. So that's really all that matters. Um, Ricky and I have spent extensive hours talking about what we were gonna do today. And what we're gonna be talking about <coughs> is uh, our own conception of a higher power or a, the universe or Buddha or Allah or whatever you choose to call it. Um, and we were talking about it earlier that even the most atheist person that doesn't believe in any type of higher power at all, when they're in a foxhole and there's a bunch of bullets and bombs going off, you bet your ass they're saying, God, get me up out of this mess until they get up out of the hole. And then once they get up out of the hole, then they go back to being that. But uh, each, one, e each one of us, there is a fundamental ideal of a power greater than ourself. So in my case, raised a, a lot of different religions. Um, first, it was a Catholic religion. We, we went every, every Sunday, did a communion, did all that good stuff. And I'm not down in any religions at all. Religion is man-made and spirituality is God-given. But we'll talk about that. Am I talking about God as in Christianity? Am I talking about God in uh, Buddha or uh, what? I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm here um, to further my growth in what? I feel my higher power would want me to be like. And I don't know, I think I talked about 17 things. So I'm going to turn it over to Ricky and then I'm going to be thinking. Your higher power is who you make it, okay? You know, I was raised Southern Baptist. You're going to go to church. If you don't go to church, you know, you're going to be here. You're going to be there. But, you know, I was always raised in a good community where you, you know, you believed that if you don't do this, you're going to hell. Okay, I had my grandma was Pentecostal on one side. I had a Southern Baptist uh, grandpa that was a preacher on my mom's side. So, you know, it was got a lot of conflict going on there for me when I was growing up. But, you know, I just had good people around me that always said, hey, man, you believe in what you believe in and don't let nobody else influence you in any kind of way on what you believe. You know, it could be God. It could be whoever you want it to be. You know, like you said, you're when you're sitting in a jail, say, oh, God, please get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. When you get out, you're like, well, I'm out now to hell with you, whoever you are up there. Right. You know, and that's what I think, Kevin, and you're talking about a lot of times. But, you know, I do believe there's someone above, you know, mm -hmm. where do we come from if there's not? You know, that's the way I have to look at that. Right. You know, and I, I pretty much think everyone sitting out here thinks there is someone up there. You know, how does everything go around? How do we have a ice storm for three days if there's not someone creating what we're doing? Right. You know, so that's pretty much, you know, what I think about it. And just, you know, I just I just go with the flow a lot in my life. But lately, over the last couple of years, losing someone real close to me in my life has made me open up my eyes and realize don't let anyone influence you on what you believe and do anymore. You live your life the way you want to live it. And whoever you believe is up there, you believe it. And you might not believe it. Dante might not believe it. Kevin, Noah. Nobody might not believe that what you believe, but never force feed something on someone and never make them feel like they have to believe what you believe. If they believe it, it's going to come to them in their own way. Right. And that's, you know... Now I want to turn it back over to you, Andrew. No, that's <clears throat> that's hitting it right on. And I know I just I had a brain fart, but so we were raised Catholic. We were going to Catholic school, and I was in first grade, and I'm always on go, always misbehaving, just doing whatever. Just I enjoyed life. Let me say that for many many years, um, and I failed first grade, and I had a parent teacher uh, conference. And my mom goes in, and it's nuns. They would just beat the hell out of you with some rulers. Now, I mean, they would beat your ass. And uh, they said, Miss Parsons, we hate to say this, but we've all got together. We think Andrew's retarded. <laughs> really? So mom snatched us up out of there, and we went to another place, uh, Christian movement place. Big, big. It was crazy big. Um, and I would see 
blind people see. I would see people wheel their wheelchair up to the, they was having a call up, you know what I'm talking about? Wheel their wheelchair up there. Man, that guy would thump them on the head. I'd some bitch get up out of that wheelchair. Start dancing. They'd pass that bucket. There goes the bucket. In uh, about a month, two months later, that same guy was in a wheelchair and they'd wheel him up. And they'd tap him on the head and up he went. So I was seeing a lot of that. I'm a little bit different than some people, maybe not different than some people. Um, I was raised in the organized religion like you were, that if you believe this way and only this way, you can enter to wherever, wherever it's at. Um, I didn't believe that way. Um, and maybe I might be referring to my sexuality. I knew all my life you're going to hell if you might be gay. And I might not. I might be. Maybe my boyfriend's gay. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it, it just, um, we joined the Baptist. But we joined like four or five different religions searching my mother. We had to go. It was forced on us. Totally forced on us. And, and then I alienated any organized religion whatsoever. And I lived a really terrible life. And there come a time through pain that I got introduced to a group of people that were overcoming some things that were going on in their life. And this one old guy, Robbie Legrone out of Carthage, Texas, he'd always talk about his higher power. And he said, and it's your conception of God. It's not what the preacher believes in. It's not, just like Ricky said, it's not what Ricky believes in. It's, it, it's not what Wayne believes in. I had to find my own higher power. But once I found that, <clears throat> they made suggestions like, now you start conducting your affairs and living like you would want your higher power, like you would think this higher power would want you to live. So I made some changes in my life because I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I used to lie a lot. I would steal, um, impose my will on other people loved sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Did I mention sex? Okay. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And just all them things got in the way, and I was having fun. But once I got around this group of people, and I started just behaving a little bit different, I was 50 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico when I really realized for sure that I had a higher power in my life and I would never be alone again. And it's not the higher power that they teach in organized religion. It's the higher power that a group of people that were just tore up from the floor up introduced me to, but they didn't introduce me to each individual higher power. They said, you find your own. So when old Robbie was telling me about his, he said, you can borrow mine till you find yours. When you find yours, I want mine back. So times, years of, and it's been going on to allow me to be who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am. Um, never would I deviate and go to like a hard Christian church. Well, we did a step with an individual and he wanted to take me to lunch to this Har Krishna temple in Dallas. Well, I was always told if you even go into something like that, you're going to hell. That was one of the most neatest experiences I've ever had in my life. I'm bald, as you can see. So I, we walked in this temple and everybody that passed me would go like this. And I said to my buddy, I said, well, what's up with that? And he says, they think you're one of the priests because you're bald. But all them people were welcoming us. They didn't, they didn't push their religion on us. They didn't say that if you don't think our way that you're gonna burn or whatever. And that's the kind of experience I want in life. You know, just like the viewers, I don't, um, you gotta, we gotta, each one of us, we have to find our own. Your own way. If you don't know your own way, like I said, I can't be you. You can't be me. You have to find your own way in life and you'll find it. 
Sometimes you might not find it till you're in your 50s, maybe 60. You know, some of them find it in their early 20s and just live the greatest life in the world. But if you don't fight demons every day, Mr. Andrew and everybody out here listening, you know, like in the mornings I wake up, I might want to slap the hell out of somebody. I might want to go smoke some weed. I might just want to just, just go off the fucking chain that day. But you can't do that anymore because you have to live you know, on the straight and narrow. And I've not always been on the straight and narrow, man. I lived one of the craziest lives anyone could live. And people know that, but you know what? I've become a better person after that. And now I can give it, you know, if you haven't lived the life, the rough life, the crazy life, the life of partying, drugs, sex, and rock and roll, then you haven't, you can't go tell nobody, oh, you can't do that because I've lived it. And I have the proof too, you know, that I lived it, but it's just, you have to say, okay, man, you know, that life you're trying to go down, bro, it ain't going to be good for you. It's going to end up bad. It's going to end up tragic. And like I said, when I had to start burying my friends because of crazy bullshit, there was some higher power. He was taking everybody, you know, and I believe that every day, you know, they, if you're not doing right, something bad can happen to you. You know, and you have to believe in what you believe in and, and follow that road. Try to keep it as straight as possible. Everybody veers off all the time, but eventually you'll get straightened out, you know, and you'll say, okay, this ain't where I want to be anymore. You know, I'm a, either got to change my life, you know, look up here and say, what do I need to do? You know, and, and if you can't feel like you're, you're, you're going in a circle, just going round and round and round, stop, go back and say, what can I change in this circle and start back over and say, all right, Andrew. That shit we've been doing, that ain't fun no more, man. We're grown. We're past all that. And you look at your friends and say, y'all, that ain't good no more. I mean, I have a grandson. I have, you know, great, wonderful kids. that, But they're spoiled as hell, just like all kids are. But you know what? I wouldn't be the man I am right now without them two kids in my life and a grandson. Right. You know? And when you don't have your parents and your, and your close friends, then you realize there is somebody up there, and he can take you just as quick as he puts you here. Quick. Quick. I mean, just quick, hard, and fast. And like I said, I, I look at a lot of these boys out here, and all I do is see my old self. And I'm going, boy, I'm about to, you know, you just got to sit there and you just laugh at them and say, hey, I'm glad. Live that life of a rock star. But you'll eventually come to a halt and you'll say, okay, this ain't for me no more. What is for me? You know, here a while back, I sat out in the middle of a field one day and asked me, what am I still here for? What is my purpose in life, even at my age? And, and I'm kind of finding myself again after a long time. You know, I'm like, this ain't what I want to do. I've got to stay focused on what I want in life and continue. And if there is someone, you know, that they call God, then let's all live that God, you know, or whatever God you believe in. Like you said, it could be Buddha. It could be this. It could be that. But believe in it, follow it, and take care of it, just like you do your body. And just like you try to tell everybody else, live the best life you can live every day. And if, if things go bad, try to slap yourself back up and say, okay, man, it's just bad today. It's going to get better tomorrow. That's right. You know, and, and, you know, like you said, do we know who, where he's from, where he's at? No, we don't. But there's somebody up there that follows us around every minute of our life. I believe that. I mean, and I, you know, and I think everybody else does too. You know, you get sick all of a sudden. Well, what made me get sick? I don't know. Something did. Right. You know, it's somebody. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't have the answers to the whole world, but I know that I believe there is somebody up there. You know, I do. And I, there's, there's, that's just me. And like I said, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Right. You know, and that's pretty much, you know. <laughs> No, but see, that's good that we can sit here and talk about that. Yeah. You know, um, and not be nobody's closed minded. Maybe maybe somebody out there has thought, oh, well, that guy's fucked up. Maybe you tell us your ideals or maybe we'll be sitting back here thinking you're fucked up. No, that's not how we work. We allow you to have your ideals and please respect me to have the ideals I have, just like I will R Ricky and Dante and Wayne and Kevin and Noah and Jackson and Kevin. I mean, it just, <clears throat> everybody has their own ideal and we should try to improve our conscious contact with that higher power, supreme being, God, Buddha, whatever, every day we should try to improve our conscious contact with them. Some people are afforded to be able to go to church all the time. There's probably more miracles can happen in places like this that'll happen in a lot of churches. 
not to save souls, but to take a man out of a place he's at and allow him to think for himself and grow to be a better human being. To me, that is being more Christian-like, and i got to keep the name of that preacher out of I can't say that. So, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's really what it's about. Why did I say Christian-like? People have told me with a group I'm with that Andrew is more Christian-like than anyone else, and I don't claim to be a Christian. But I have my own ideal. And if there is a bad place that we can go, I will promise you, I'm not going. Nobody wants to be there. No. The life I live today that you people have afforded me, this place has sort of saved my ass with the situation that's going on with my mom, just the commitment. Because on the way out here, I just get like a, some serenity going on. And I'm going like, whew, and it's like a safe place. I don't have to answer my phone. I can show you people I love you. You don't judge me. You know, you can't do this. You can't do this in a Baptist church. You can't do it in a Catholic church. You can't do it at Moose Lodge and Guamas. If we talk like this there, they boot our ass up out of here. You know what I'm saying? And this is, this is a good thing. Well, well. if y'all like what we're talking about, y'all are welcome to come out here at 1.15 on uh, every Sunday. And me and Andrew, thank y'all for joining in. And uh, I know this was not a very long topic, but this is all we had to say. And we're not going to talk about much more, but we're going to go eat some food that Andrew prepared. And if y'all like what we're talking about, 1.15 on Sunday afternoon. Mystics of Texas. That's it. Thank you.